Hello my soccer universe to the Premier League Eredivisie review for this week and yes again it will be slightly less uh, less quality because I really need to get this video out. Serie A you'll probably get on Wednesday although there's still stuff to be played but yeah. Let's get right to it. I'm wearing Manchester City because um, Manchester City looks like they're taking over. That's, I think we have to say clearly, uh, Manchester City is about to take over the Premier League and there's not much that the others maybe can seem to do, but we will have to see. Uh, they look quite convincing at, at the moment. The other one is a rather dull top clash, top of the table clash. And <clears throat> I think if you're United, you're a fan, you're probably disappointed. Uh, Liverpool fan probably also, so it, it's not a bowling well for either one of these teams, maybe more for United uh, to get this point, but I think they should have gotten more. Um, yeah, those are the main uh, headlines from the Premier League and from the Eredivisie. We had Ajax having lots of luck winning the Classica against Feyenoord and an 8-goal thriller in Rotterdam season and Wolfen win. So. We'll talk about that. Let's get to the games. Um, we had a black country derby between Wolves and West Brom. That was the perfect win for West Brom. A, they only scored uh, goals that kind of Sam Allardyce wants to have. All from set pieces or throw-ins or whatever. And second, because um, what well, I call a perfect win. They had the lead and they were one goal down. Then they had, uh, and, and they got the win. This is for me the perfect 3-2 win. Um, Brighton fully deservedly beats Leeds United. Uh, Mope getting the goal early. But it, it should have been probably more Leeds United. Looking rather flat these last few uh, weeks. So doesn't look good either. Aston Villa against Everton had to be postponed because Aston Villa was on lockdown and for that reason the Friday game between Fulham and Chelsea was moved into, into the slot. Flat performance by Chelsea. They get the win but to, to be honest it was all down to a red card uh, uh, late in the second half or just before the half time that actually then tilted the game towards Chelsea's um, way. In the evening though a really convincing performance by Leicester. Yes, Southampton didn't have uh, Danny Ings, but Leicester really played well. I saw highlights, I saw uh, parts of the, of, of the game, especially lay, lay it on. I mean, it was only a 2-0 score and it was 1-0 for the longest of, of times, but it could have been 3 or 4. Uh, Leicester really, really playing well forwards. I really like the first goal by Madison where Yuri Tielemans is playing a deep uh, ball in, into the box where Madison um, powers against a uh, few of the defenders and charge, yanks it into the near corner. A uh, really, really nice, nice goal. And then uh, very late on, uh, Barnes makes it 2-0, also by Tillmans. But at, at that point, they should have already put the game away. Uh, the game away well, put, was put also by Spurs. Uh, Aurea giving them an early lead, uh, which Spurs are want to do uh, as of late. But then they followed up and Harry Kane uh, scoring egg, actually pretty nice goal. Son, I think, before that hitting the upright. So um was ra rather convincing. Of course, Sheffield had a comeback because the second half is not necessary for Spurs. Uh, but three minutes later, Ndombele with an absolute stunning goal, the way he, uh, with the outside of his foot, not low looking at goal, lobs it in the internet. That was a great, great, great goal. Uh, and I think it, I really think it was fully intended. I mean, there, there, there's like, yes, he, he is like a dad that goes in, but it was fully intended to go the way because I think he had the idea that uh, when he went there, he knew where, where, where the goal is. So really, really great goal. Liverpool against Manchester United. Ooh, it was a tough watch for most, most of the time. Uh, I'm not saying it was a bad game, it was, it was a tough watch because it, uh, I almost called it, I think, uh, earlier <laughs> um, in, in, in a previous video, that it will be that they two will neutralize themselves. In the first half, I thought Liverpool had a little bit more of the game, had probably also some slight chances, but um, the front three are off. I mean, uh, Mane is still working his ass off, he's a little bit unlucky. Firmino's aim is off and Salah is just making a disappearing act. I was surprised that Shakiri actually played, but you know, uh, I hear he is injured, so it was time for him to get back into the game. Uh, the biggest chance in the first half was uh, Bruno Fernandes' free kick. Uh, which kind of tells you where the game was kind of headed in many ways. Second half, 
United really uh, had the better chances, uh, truly the better chance, and were also better, better in the game, especially in the last 15, 20, 20 minutes. And I think it's really down that Liverpool is just tired and exhausted. I That's the feeling that I have. And so, um, Mention that just Justin Kepler. There was a good chance by Bruno Fernandes, then a great one by Pogba. Uh, where I have the feeling he needs to put this away, but then again, Alisson is there. Yes, there a little bit also had had a chance. I think on the balance, the draw was all right, but probably should have. I think both are not happy with, with that. And uh, Liverpool again, I think now three games in a row where they didn't score and. Yeah, um, they need Diogo Jota back. I think uh, Manchester United. I think uh, you can't firmly call them into the title race, but I would not call them um, favorites by any stretch at the moment because what Manchester City produced. You know, I was really bored watching Manchester City, and I have not watched them for uh, for, for 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 a long time. But I have the feeling that in the last a Pep at first solidified the defense and uh, John Stones is now suddenly a big factor uh, there as, as well who was out of it in the last two years I have the feeling so uh, he solidified the defense and now they actually can play forward and look sharp doing so uh, even without Sergio Aguero I mean I always felt that you know with Gabriel Jesus you don't have the punch going forward but if Kevin De Bruyne plays sharp and everything starts clicking I mean you still have Raheem Sterling up there uh, and you have enough creativity from midfield that you actually really could uh, threaten for more. John Stones, after a wonderful De Bruyne assist, gets the first goal. Then Gundogan, also a really nice goal in the 56th. Um, uh, John Stones then, uh, you know, this was uh, dusted it off uh, to make it 3-0 and Raheem Sterling with another really nice free kick. 4-0 uh, Manchester City looking super, super convincing at the moment. And uh, super convincing, although I think it's very much down to Newcastle not being a good team. And now I called them earlier this season the thieving magpies. Um, I think they forgot the thieving part at the, at the moment. They cannot steal games anymore. And Arsenal just needed to wait until the breakdown. And it's great that Aubameyang gets back on the scoring sheet for them. I think he scored now 5-2 uh, yesterday in the evening. Saka in, the, in, in, in between as well, giving Arsenal a good lead. And, you know, all the talks before Christmas of Arsenal being in crisis, a little bit abated. Yes, the, they're still a little bit nowhere in the table, but maybe there's something growing. And the UFO's uh, counter is also gone. So let's look at the standings because lots of things happened. I mean, everything based based on the top half uh, switched around. United stay top. But you see already, chances of winning a title 15%, same as Liverpool and Manchester City 65%. This is huge. This is really huge because uh, Manchester City has a game less and it's only two points behind. So you already, already can guess when we will adjust in a bit where this, this is going. Liverpool now only in fourth and looking really tired and tried and a little bit down. Spurs moving up, Everton didn't play. Uh, so that's why Spurs could move, move up. Southampton is falling down a little bit. And as you see, Arsenal is now at the top half of the table already. To the bottom, yes, Fulham... If you lose, you cannot get, get, get out there and with Brighton winning, it really looks like the bottom three are really taking nicely shape. Let's adjust the table. Um, and we see City. Not only are they pretty much right on track when you look at projected versus expected. So uh, with a 2.1 points av average, they expected to get uh, a little bit less than 79 points. Uh, that They expected to get... This, uh, Expect to get less than 78 points, expected 79, so they're pretty much on, on track. United still overperforming, as does Leicester. Liverpool clearly getting more into the, in the, into the disappointing part at, at, at the moment. Um, with the game in hand, Everton would, of course, uh, take over Spurs. Um, and Aston Villa, with so many game games in hand, of course, is also moving up. Uh, but Aston Villa will now have to play a few games, so let's see if they can keep this lofty position. Which also will mean, for instance, Arsenal drops down to 11th. And on the bottom, uh, note that West Brom is pretty much <laughs> performing as we will, will expect. And it's Sheffield United and Fulham and Brighton that are actually uh, disappointing, have disappointing campaigns at the moment. Looking at the expected uh, standing, so this is really where I take the sim simulations and uh, average the points out. We see Manchester City a firm favorite at the moment, six points ahead of United, who have leapfrogged Liverpool. Here, but it's very much they're very much on the same head to head uh, 
will be interesting. I at the moment the way the thing things are going. I mean, uh, a month or so ago, I would have said there's no way that United can keep up with Liverpool, but Liverpool looks stale, and United actually uh, by starting to win, a rhyme a little bit of Milan. Uh, not playing great, but you know something's clicking. We have the Leicester Spurs and Chelsea for the remaining Champions League spot and the, uh, some European spots, and then. A, Broad midfield, Aston Villa to Southampton that potentially could make it into the Euro Europa League. Wolves to Brighton, still safe-ish for rele relegation. It starts at Burnley, but I would not count. Uh, there's a real car cracker of Wolves having a pretty bad season themselves. The weekend, or what's being played this, this week, it's a whole lot of mess in many ways. We have round 18. First of all, Leeds United Southampton has been called off. Uh, that's what I saw. And we already saw that um, uh, Villa against Spurs uh, was also called off. That needs to be replayed uh, from last week. So we have West Ham United, West Brom. Uh, we have a, a pretty interesting already tonight between Leicester and Chelsea. Hmm, probably will watch a full United and then Liverpool Burnley um, should be easy wins but it's also should will Liverpool score again uh, United I would expect to win but we also have Manchester City making a makeup game against Aston Villa on Wednesday that actually is a very interesting game I have have to say um, yeah tempted let's put it that way and then for round 11 this is on the weekend we have Aston Villa Newcastle United with why is there Premier League only one Premier League game on the weekend because we also have the FA Cup first time this season um, Southampton Shrewsbury Town is played tonight so we will see the winner I would expect Southampton the winner plays Arsenal um, at home so that's an in interesting one here are a few other interesting matchups I think you can see what's the big one United against Liverpool I just have the feeling that Liverpool will not play the first squad who knows? Uh, just knowing how a club values this com 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 competition, I uh, don't really see it. I think an interesting one is also Brentford against Leicester. I think that is uh, a little bit outside. I mean, I don't know much about the, ch the championship uh, per se, but I know that Brentford is a very interesting team to watch. So here are a few ties and we'll keep talking about them. I'm not sure how much FA Cup I'll be watching. Moving on to the Netherlands, where we had an absolutely exciting eight-goal game between Sparta, Rotterdam and PSV after Vitesse uh, expectedly beat MN4-1. PSV found themselves down to Smith. It was all wintry conditions. I mean, they should have been skating, uh, play hockey or well, whatever, not necessarily soccer. Uh, so in the fourth minute, Sparta takes the lead, but Mauro Junior in 24th can equalize. It's 1-1 and you just think, yeah, this is like a normal game. But then PSV turns on the turbo. Uh, Daniel Malen and Madweke uh, fall for the seventh and 49th, make it 3-1. Uh, then uh, Max, Philipp Max in the 71st, 4-1, and you think PSV is cruising. No, Gravenberg, Gravenberg, and not the one from Ajax. <laughs> uh, gets a goal back in the 75th, and then the penalty in the 7th makes it 3-4. So you have basically five minutes to go, but Malen adds another one, it's 5-3 PSV. Uh, AZ also get, gets a win 2-1, uh, Groningen and Twente 2-2, that sounds interesting. And then if I actually at the same time, same time as Liverpool against United, I watched Ajax Feyenoord. There was only a half hour over that, which, which I found was uh, quite nice. Uh, I think at the beginning Ajax was the bad, better team, but it was an individual effort by Gravenberg, you now the uh, big uh, news potential new star of uh, the net the Netherlands who makes it 1-0 in the 20, 20 second and I have to say up, up to that point I thought that Ajax was better but Feyenoord found in, in, into the game and honestly in the second half they should have equalized. Berghuis twice uh, just puts it wide to, to the right side very similar shots and then just before kick kick of the even uh, hit the crossbar Feyenoord with very interesting jerseys would have Fully, fully deserved to get a 1-1 one, one draw out of this one. But with this result, uh, Feyenoord actually drops down uh, the ladder. And it's not only on the fourth because Vitesse and PSV have been winning, but Ajax really still with a comfortable uh, three-point lead. Uh, and you have the feeling that Vitesse might not hang on in there for much longer. Uh, so Ajax heavily favored to win the championship with PSV given outside chance and those two probably also in the champ Champions League. I still wouldn't count out AZ.
to be honest. We don't need to adjust, but we get a little bit of a feeling how the relative performances in are. And we see that Vitesse, of course, is outperforming what is expected from them if we will project the uh, average points forward to, to, to the end of the season. Uh, also, Groningen is doing uh, quite well, but everyone is a little bit outperforming themselves on top of the table and the bottom. The other way around, except for Fenlo, the, you know, the 13 nil losers, I will never forget that game. Expected standings, um, yeah, as I said, Ajax PSV are uh, one, one and two, then Vitesse, Feyenoord and AZ for third spot, the way it looks like uh, right, right now. We also know that there is, uh, from 4 or 4 7, is a playoff for the Conference League. So, uh, Groningen, Twente, Utrecht, may, maybe Sparta have, have, have the same that. And on the bottom, Willem Dweka, the wind that got them a little bit out, but uh, Den Haag and Emmen seem like the ones that are going down. Next round, we still get an interesting game between Feyenoord and AZ. I think that is a one where AZ could probably uh, put themselves forward or Feyenoord could say, okay, AZ, no, not this time around. Ajax has an easy game at Sittard and PSV an easy game at Fallwijk and Vitesse Groningen could be an interesting one too. So that's it from Premier League uh, Eredivisie this week. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, drop a line below. If you want to add something to what I've observed here, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!